Hi everyone, it's Shandria, creative owner of BCJ Decor. I wanted to come to you guys again this week. I actually got some comments and some of the same questions based off of the last video. So thank you for everyone who subscribed and thank you for everyone who left me an email. So I noticed that after going through a couple of emails, some of the requests were the same. And a lot of people wanted to know, how do you pick your jars? So for all my candle makers out there, jars, waxes, fragrances, wicks, Stickers are kind of what we do, especially with the labeling. But everyone was trying to figure out what's the best type of jar, what's the differences in jars. And I'm here to tell you guys, I've learned a couple of lessons on jars. So first and foremost, let me show some of the jars that I've used since starting last year. One of the first things I had to decide was what size candle I actually wanted to make. And that was a hard one. Most of us walk into some of the major retailers and we automatically walk toward a large candle. And you don't really realize that there aren't very many sizes available. So most companies do narrow it down to two to three different sizes because they're trying to really rein in one specific type of customer. And the customer can have multiple faces, multiple careers and backgrounds. But in general, I'm going to kind of figure out, am I going for someone who has a large room, a smaller room, or I just want an obsessive candle burner? So, one of the first things I did, of course, hopped online and we went to our favorite website, you know, Amazon.com has everything and we know it, and I ended up finding these, all right? 16 ounce jars, um, I was convinced that 16 ounces was going to be the best size I had ever found. Guys, these were expensive and there's no other way to say it. When you were breaking down your costs, these come in a case of 12, you're looking at $28 per case. And for some reason, the first month I was pouring candles, I was convinced that $28 was the best price for a 16 ounce jar that I could find. And I was absolutely wrong. The reason I picked this jar in particular to start with is because the person that I was watching online used the same company. And it was of course what they suggested. So until you know better to do better, you just kind of go with what you've been introduced to. Now, are they lovely jars? Do they work well? Was my wax adhesive to the walls? The answer is yes. Um, they're actually pretty resistant to breaking, even though they're glass. But we dropped a couple of cases and nothing broke. The lids were always nicely fitted. And of course, it was large enough for you to place a sticker. And the person that I was watching, she put a large sticker on the top, as well as a label that wrapped around. All right, and this is one of jars where starting out trying to figure out something to do. So I wrapped twine around it and this is my 16 ounce camp, right? So eventually I figured out after keeping up spreadsheet wise, what's selling and what's not selling. The second size that I offer were 12 ounces and you'll notice the change in jars. So size wise, I'll hold these up a little different. You can kind of see the difference in size, but I want you to pay attention to packaging and how it looks. This one sold faster than this one. Even if I placed them in a craft fair side by side, same price, individuals, I had more customers pick up the 12 ounce candle before they would pick up the 16. And there were a couple of reasons why. I had some clients that didn't want to commit to a fragrance. They felt like after a certain point, a candle would lose its fragrance and some candles do. That's where the difference comes in with the type of wax you're using and you really have to start selling yourself. Your fragrance will be consistent from the first burn to the last burn. The other thing I noticed about this packaging, which you'll see this common jar pretty often, it's really, really nice for these two inch by two inch labels. All of my labels are Avery labels. They're permanently, um, permanent sticker labels for anything from canning jars to plastic jars. Guys, the adhesive is great. It actually holds the ink from my laser jet really well and ink jet, so this one does Great. You can order these from Amazon, but I'll be honest, if you are using Avery labels, guys, go to Avery.com. Avery.com will give you the best prices. And once you start to order and reorder and reorder, you'll get 15, 20, sometimes 30% off. So the longer you go, the deeper you get into your business, you will learn the power of buying in bulk. 
And it's hard to commit to that sometimes, but it's really important that you pay attention to how much is each item. I get these from a local distributor. So my candle um, um, distributor carries my fragrance, my wax, my wicks, and they also offer jars and lids. The beautiful thing about this one, and I will put their information in the description box below, all of their prices include both. So we're looking about less than $9 per case. So we're paying less than a dollar per jar. Going from a 16 ounce candle to a 12 ounce candle cut my packaging in half. And that was a big one. The other thing I also noticed is 12 ounce jars will move pretty well, especially if you're working in an area that has more neighborhoods. So you're dealing with more homeowners, larger homes, businesses, or those people that are consistent burners. So keep that in mind. Now the 16 and the 12 ounce were not my only sizes. Though I did eventually phase out my 16 ounce jar, my eight ounce, this eight ounce guys has been a big one. Now, Compared in size, my eight ounce jar will usually appeal to just about anyone. And I had to pay attention to pricing as well, because prices will vary. I've seen some people that charge $6 for an eight ounce candle. Don't worry, you've got to go up. I've seen $8, $10. I've seen as much as $15 for an eight ounce candle. But in my area for right now, for what I'm doing, I'll be honest, I charge $10 for my eight ounce candle. So anywhere from 10 to 12, depending on location. The eight ounce candle is always going to be the number one seller. And I do eight ounce and I also do a mini four ounce. Four ounces are huge if you are doing an assortment. When I make baskets, four ounces are the way to go. I can include a basket where you're offered three different fragrances and it's going to be almost the equivalent of the amount of wax that's in this jar. The more you pour, you're going to start paying attention to how much wax you're using per jar as well. Everything will kind of play off of your jar, your style. If you want to go into an area and you're presenting yourself as a luxury hand pour candle maker, then your packaging has to follow. That includes the labeling, the lid. Some people have nicely wrapped boxes and boxing is a whole different story. This is before you get to what happens when I get an online order. So first and foremost, pick your size. Do you want 16 ounce candles or larger? Or do you want to specialize in four ounce candles or smaller? And I've seen them as small as two ounce to an ounce and a half. Just depends on what your niche is going to be. The other thing you want to really be consistent with is the color. If you change the color of your lids, is it a lid color that is offered throughout the year? I know, for example, I've, I've worked with some companies and ordered from some companies that have lids that they only offer on a seasonal basis. And if you don't think about it or don't see it, then you go back in to place another order and there's nothing that's there. All right. So as you're pouring, you're getting to know your jars, you're getting to know your sizes. You may choose to only focus on two sizes. There's nothing wrong with that. Once you can command those two, then you're more than welcome to move up. But if you want to scale your business, figure out where's the biggest bang for your buck. The other question I got was about wax melts. And to be honest, my wax melts that come in the small containers, like the little six cavity containers, and we'll do a video on those, is going to contain the same wax as what goes into the jars. The only time I change waxes is when I actually use a silicone mold. So my company just introduced the Teddy Tart. And if you visit the website, you'll see these nice little teddy bear shapes. They're about an inch and a half large. And so Teddy Tarts, I use a pillar wax instead of my soy paraffin blend. And that allows me to get a hardened wax that will hold its shape. And that's because those are individually packaged. If you guys want to go through packaging, labels, stickers, let me know. If you're interested in the fragrances or the waxes or the reasons that I've chosen those waxes, definitely let me know. It is good seeing you guys again. I will definitely get another video in here next week. Let me know what you're cracking on. What are you working on? Follow us on Instagram, BCJ underscore decor d-e-c-o-r um, you can also of course subscribe and find us here on youtube don't hesitate to email bcjdecor at gmail.com and i'll see you guys soon thanks